Good afternoon. Okay, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and we have with us today David Hodges, who is a massage therapist, energy healer, naturopath, and nutritionist in Auckland, New Zealand. David is going to talk to us today, today about how to achieve optimal health and happiness. So, hi, David. Good morning, Julia. Thank you for having me on the show. Good to have you. Um, yeah, I'm uh, delighted to be here. Do you want me to just did you just start, um, or did you have some questions that you wanted to start with? No, I'd li I'd like to hear how we can some of your best ideas on how to achieve optimal health. Okay, well, basically, um, what I over the years is that our bodies um, they have an innate Correcting mechanism, self-healing, the body is very capable of uh, healing itself and usually um, usually does so without assistance. But uh, for that, you do need certain things like enough nutrition, enough sleep, exercise, and so on. Uh, there was a, a dentist by the name of Weston A. Price in the 20s uh, who... You know, like most dentists in America, he was in Cleveland, um, most like he was noticing that most of his clients had terrible teeth. And he also noticed that their health generally didn't seem to be that great, but he was mostly looking at their teeth as a dentist. And he kept hearing reports from people who'd come back from overseas um, because sort of international travel was just starting about that time in the 1920s saying that people in overseas countries, um, sort of the primitive people who are sticking to their traditional diets, they were remarkably healthy. They seemed to be pretty much free of illness and had fantastic And he thought, well, what can I do for my clients? And we kept hearing his story. So he thought, well, I'll go and see if it's true. So he traveled all over the world for, I think it was more than a year. And what he found was that these reports were true. When the people ate their traditional diets, the same foods that they've been eating for thousands of years, <laughs> they had excellent teeth and excellent health. You know, the cancer was pretty much unheard of, heart disease, nobody had it. Um, he would find like about one... I think it was about one cavity in every hundred or so teeth. So that's like about one cavity for three people. Um, mm -hmm. And these were in people who never brushed their teeth. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there was no fluoride in their water. They didn't use toothpaste, anything like that. And, no flossing. And they enjoyed the excellent teeth. No flossing. Mm -hmm. And they had great health um, in pretty much every way. But... They had just started introducing Western, modern Western foods like white sugar and white flour into these countries. And he could see the difference. The people who had started to eat these foods, they um, very quickly got tooth decay. And if they had been eating them for some time and they had had children and the parents had been eating these foods and the children had been eating them since before the children were born and the children had been eating the foods, then the, the children were remarkably different, remarkably less healthy. And you could even see the difference in the shape of the faces. Um, he said all of the, pretty much all of the people who'd been eating the traditional foods, they had um, wide faces and they had, so there was plenty of room for their teeth. There was no crowding of the teeth. They didn't need orthodontics. Um, they had straight teeth, beautiful straight teeth, 
And when they had been eating these Western foods for a few years, the children, they had the, the narrow faces, crowded teeth, they, 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 I don't know, I'm not sure whether, I don't think orthodontics was invented back then, but today we would say they needed orthodontics. Um, mm-hmm. you know, their teeth were just a complete shambles. And, um, what we now know is that that has a lot to do with vitamin K. Um, vitamin K deficiency causes narrow face and the, the modern, there's, there's no vitamin K in sugar or flour. Vitamin K is in so, you know, you like your kale, your cabbage, your um, dark leafy greens, and um, which is not what, you know, the Western traders were selling. Um, so there was someone by the name of um, Sally Fallon uh, about 20 years ago, I think. She, I think she had some health issues of her own and her children, and she um, started looking into nutrition, and she found... Uh, Dr. Price's work, and she popularized it. She created a uh, foundation called the Western A. Price Foundation or the Price Pottinger Foundation, which is uh, spreading this information about good nutrition, how to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. And you know, what they found is compare the traditional diets with what people are eating today. Um, they traditionally more than twice as much of most of the major um, vitamins and and in several cases like up to 10 times as much. They have far more vitamin A, vitamin D, um, and so on. And it makes a huge difference. I mean, I've noticed in my own health, I used to eat not so healthy around about um, 10 years ago, I had all sorts of problems. And once I started eating healthy, all the actually cleared up, um, Hmm. some of them fairly quickly. Uh, some of them took a little bit longer. They all cleared up, and it just makes a huge difference. Um, so that that's something that we is um, governments. I don't I don't think they're doing as much about it as they could. Um, uh, I'd like to you know see governments doing more to promote healthy food, better education <coughs> about food in schools, um, nutrition, what's good for you, and so on. Um, now, the other things that are good for you, well, definitely your attitude, your thoughts, your emotions. Um, there was a, there's a woman called uh, Candace Pitt. She was a neuroscientist. And she, what she found from her research was that we have um, receptors for uh, neurotransmitters in just about every cell of our body. So when oh. you're feeling happy... <clears throat> all of the cells in your body, they pick up these <laughs> neurotransmitters saying you're happy. And it has uh, all sorts of effects on, on the body. Um, you know, on your immune system, the, uh, one of the things that, that was found was that uh, uh, your cells have a for um, noradrenaline, which is one of the chemicals which is neurotransmitters which is produced when you're feeling kind of happy and excited, uh, happy. Um, this receptor is the receptor that um, cold viruses used to, or some of them, because the cold viruses used to get into cells. So when you're happy and upbeat, the cold viruses can't get in because the receptor is already full of the transmitter. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said, you know, this, this just correlates with my own experience. I never get a cold when I'm just about to go on a skiing because that's when she's just excited and happy. Um, so... Uh, this is sorry. Um, I don't know what, whether your your screen went blank, but my screen said I cut it. My screen went blank just then. Um, she said that uh, I lost my train of thought. Um, uh, the yeah neurotransmitters. Um, it just makes a huge difference to, 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 to your, your health. And there's this, oh, that's right, that backs up the traditional, this has always been a traditional uh, healer's view, um, that you, know, you, you need to um, work on your emotions to affect your physical health. We've known that for like thousands of years, but now the modern science is, is backing that up. Mm-hmm. And um, because the body has um, such an ability to correct itself, uh, generally... 
um, what's needed. Um, once you correct your thoughts, uh, you correct your diet, um, usually that would be enough. Um, but if, it, if um, it still doesn't quite come right and it needs a little bit of a nudge, then it usually is only a small nudge. Um, there's a herbalist, Susan Weeds, he talks about like three traditions of healing, um, three they're kind of like attitudes to healing that um, they can apply whatever the um, technique is used, whether it's herbs or massage or whatever. Um, she calls them the, the modern scientific tradition where the therapist knows best and they, they tell you what to do and you just listen and do what you're told. Um, she said another one is like the heroic tradition she calls it's in some ways quite similar um, but it tends to uh, often use more traditional methods but the idea in the heroic tradition is that you need, if someone is sick you need this massive intervention to get them to, to come right you would give them like a huge dose of herbs or a, um, like a really deep painful deep tissue massage or some you know massive to to fix the problem, and um, Susan doesn't agree with that. She suggests that the she believes in the third tradition, which is the um, she calls it the wise woman tradition. Mm -hmm. that you're just supporting the body to support itself. She's a herbalist, so she would give, uh, and I do a little bit of that. As well. um, so we would just give um, gentle, safe herbs for that um, in, in moderate doses, the kind of dose that's you know, general and safe enough, you could take it every day if you wanted to, even if you're not sick, um, because it's just supporting, acting as a tonic. And um, so I totally agree with, with uh, that, um, <coughs> that theory or that attitude in, in whatever modality you use. I'm the same in my body work. I don't do um, painful massage because it's the necessary. Um, one of the techniques I use a lot, it's called uh, ortho I mean, It was developed by an osteopath um, who just discovered this self-correcting ability of the body. He discovered that um, if you give the right kind of gentle stimulus, uh, uh, pretty much all sorts of those skeletal collisions will correct, correct themselves. Um, tense muscles will just relax, uh, and uh, you know, if the body has incorrect movement patterns, those will um, resolve. It'll learn to move correctly, and so on. Um, it really doesn't take much, uh, in the vast majority of cases, to to get the body um, back on track. Um, so, you know, pretty much um, good health is not really that difficult. It's, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. And you talked about some body therapies. What would those be? Um, so, yeah, um, orthobiotomy I've already mentioned. Um, the, the, some of the other therapies are uh, energy healing. Um, so I do a bit of Reiki. That is something that has probably been around for hundreds or thousands of years, but it, it became popularized uh, by a Japanese. Uh, uh, I'll let you answer that if you need to. No. Okay. Sorry. It's all right. Um, so Reiki, uh, it, it's the means divine energy um, because the, the person who raised a, a Japanese man in the 1950s, I think it was, um, he believed that the energy came from, from God. Some people think that the energy comes from the Earth's magnetic field. We don't really know exactly where it comes from, but um, it has been proven, like in physics laboratories, that these um, traditional healers using this healing energy, they put their hands on, um, for hands on healing, you know, like there's Christian healers that do it, they say obviously that the energy comes from God, there's more, there's other traditional healers that, I don't know where they say it comes from, but when they put their hands on people um, and uh, do their thing with the, the healing energy, 
you can actually measure the energy out of their hands and um, measure the frequency of it and the intensity of it. Um, a lot of the energy is at the same frequency in the magnetic field, so that kind of supports the theory that maybe that's where it comes from. Um, and these these frequencies that they um, they are used in medicine or like bone healing uh, if bones are not uh, uh, after a long period of time they will often give you a dose of this eight eight kilometer frequency and, and to, to just the bone healing by itself and this is the same and frequency, on frequency that is coming out of these healers' hands. And the therapies that I use as well, I actually started, and I was giving my ex-partner a touch, and she said, oh, I can feel all this coming out of your hands. And of course, mm-hmm. as soon as she said that, I stopped. Uh, uh, I was like, what? Well, <laughs> 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 Jolted jolt me out of that, that space. But... Uh, be very long to, to realize that you know just get into kind of space or move mood and and this came out of my hand and um that's pretty good but, but i decided to to um be like a professional reiki healer um because it's they can give you achievements that increase greatly increase your abilities channel this energy like a huge improvement um, huge increase in energy after um, so that um, technique uh, no contraindications uh, for pretty much anything because it will almost anything um, energy techniques that I use that are specifically focused on um, clear pathways because in the Chinese medical, um, they knew about uh, uh, acupuncture. Basically, the theory of mm-hmm. those is the uh, deep pathways where this energy flows through the, the Indians had a somewhat similar idea of flows. The Indians called it prana, the Chinese called it uh, deep. And um, the energy flow gets stuck. It can cause problems. Techniques I use, they're just unblocking these in the new channels to keep the energy flowing well. And I've had very amazing results with those um, for emotional as well as physical issues. Um, right. Seems to be very good for viruses. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, Throw the other body therapies. Those are, those are probably two of the main ones that I use. Um, working with the, the fascia, that's um, still a some neglected um, part of body therapy. Um, most body therapists, they work just with, with muscles. And um, if, if they had probably um, studied their anatomy and physiology a bit more carefully, um, they might have picked up the significance of the fact that your body is full of all this connective tissue surrounding the muscle and running through every muscle, the connective tissue, this fascia, um, uh, it joins the muscles onto the bones as tendons, um, but as I said, it surrounds the muscles and runs through them. Uh, and there's layers of it separating the muscles between the muscles and the skin. It's just everywhere in the body. There's um, one therapist that even suggests that uh, if you took everything else out of the body and just let it you, then the body would um, probably just about stand up by itself. That's kind of how important it is. Uh, this um, fascia, it's uh, you, you need. Um, most largely collagen, uh, which is uh, some people will have heard of collagen that for the lip injury to bulk up your lips, but um, collagen is one of the proteins in the, in the body. You need vitamin C to make. Um, so, and where um, do you get collagen? How do you get it? 
Yeah. You, you make it yourself, but you need vitamin C. Um, so okay. uh, people who aren't getting vitamin C, which is quite a lot of people these days, they're more likely to get muscle tears, strains, uh, these sorts of injuries because um, they're not making collagen efficiently because you know, they're not getting enough vitamin C. And so their their you know tendons and ligaments and muscle weak. Right. Um, but it all needs to be hydrated uh, because in a healthy state, this fascia is about 90%. Um, when it becomes dehydrated, it's weak. So it is very important to drink enough water. Uh, not, not too much, not ridiculous amounts. Um, I have actually died from drinking too much water. Um, but, you know, um, for most people... I don't people, think most people come close to drinking too much water. <laughs> No, no. I, for most people, somewhere between one and two liters a day is ideal. It depends, you know, how much water you're getting from your food and so on. If you're eating a very dry diet, then you would need to drink more water. If you're eating fruit or something, you wouldn't need so much. Um, but, yeah, one of the therapies that I use is, like, mainly put more pressure than on the, the muscles because this this uh, fascia is... Um, in some ways, it's a little. You could think of it as being a little bit a strong uh, spider web, or a cross between a spider web and glider. It's like a, a wrapping. And if you um, if there's a if you pull on it, it's connected through the whole body. So it will through the whole body. You could you could pull on the face of someone's little toe, and it will pull on their face. Feel it. But it does actually do that um, to an extent. Um, and the, the fascia, if it's not looked like the person gets dehydrated or um, they're just body incorrectly or whatever, it, it gets um, tension in the, in the wrong places yeah. and so on. Um, and it, it doesn't take a lot, a very gentle... Um, pressure in the right places will just get the fascia to unwind. Uh, the results with that are often quite amazing as well. Um, you know, I have some clients all the time um, say to me, it feels like you didn't do anything, but my pain is gone. <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> Yeah, it's a very different experience from what a lot of them are used to with, with other mass artists. That's um, what Rolf, where they, they do. Isn't that what Rolfing is doing, is manipulating that fascia? Uh, I think it is a um, slightly different way um, from what I've experienced it myself, but from what I've heard, Rolfing can be quite painful. Um, and... Yeah, I just find the the don't need to inflict pain to get the results. And you actually oh, get really better results good. without generally because if the body's in pain, um, it just wants to move away from pain and wants to get away. Um, it, it it can't do the things that normally happen in one of my sessions. The, when it's relaxed, um, it. it it can, it can think about what's going on. Um, it can process the information that I'm giving it through my hands, through the gentle manipulations, and it can go, oh, yeah, actually, that feels like that, and, um, you know, and so on. And it can mm -hmm. just adjust itself. When it's in pain, all it wants to do up, and it's, it's, it's still just, you create a lot of problems. Well, David, we're running out of time, but do you have a website where people can go and find out more about your methods? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a website, www.aucklandnaturalhealth.co.nz. Um, so for people who don't know how to spell Auckland. Auckland? Auckland. A yeah, it's um, A-U-C-K. Naturalhealth.co.nz, or in Z, you would say over there, for okay. New Zealand. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, I have a, a bunch of articles on, on my site. Um, if, if people just enter their um, address, they get access to the articles. It's free. Um, and I'm, I'm publishing new articles every few weeks. Um, you know, and just the kind of information that. And we have an article people. from you for at uh, tvbackstory.com as well. And yes. that's. Yes, I hope. And that has it. a link to uh, your website? Uh, yes, I think it does. Okay, so anybody who's watching this broadcast can go to tvbackstory.com, read David's article, and uh, link up with his website. Great. Thank you very much, Julia. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you.